What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Internet Famous, the show that's almost as good at hitting a weekly schedule um, as it is dealing with tech issues. I'm your host, Devalor, and tonight we have a show. So, um, that's cool, I guess. That's kind of neat. Anyway, joining me tonight is always, as always, is my co-host, uh, the type of guy you can tell just by looking at him that he would wear a shirt from his favorite Waffle House. It's the one, the only, it's AKA Mike B. What's up? It's it's my favorite, it's the only white chicken Waffle House that I actually know of. I've only known of like one other place relatively locally that actually serves chicken waffles and they took it off the menu. It was the best fucking thing in the entire place and they took it off the menu. <laughs> uh, and that was, it was actually really close to GDC, which is if I went there all the time. So now, I gotta wait to go to to go to Roscoe's hashtag ad. No, actually, it's not. Maybe I should talk to him about that though. Hey, anyway, good story. <laughs> <laughs> and our special guest this week, uh, you probably know from such things as the internet and um, and video games. You know, just stuff in general. Just off the top of your head. Yeah, uh, I gotta say his artifacting is on point today, though. Uh, it's everyone's favorite JPEG, Shizzle. Hi. Help me, I'm trapped in a 2D format. <laughs> <laughs> I can't move my face. I can't move my face. You're like the Paper Mario of show hosts. <laughs> Paper Mario show host. Can I put that on like, my resume? Maybe. I don't know how far that'll get you, though. Yeah. I'll so, yeah. put a link to the show. They'll get it. <laughs> They'll get around to it eventually. Um. So, quick reminder to everybody, uh, we do ask... For a uh, an, a show name, an episode name, from the chat for the uh, for the end of the show. So keep in mind as we are going through the show, if you're watching this live, um, that we will be asking you for a name for this episode a little bit later on. Aren't we special? Aren't we fancy mm-hmm. and stuff? Uh, so anyway, yeah, it's actually been a, it's been a couple of weeks since we had one. There was kind of a there was a week of like no topics, and then there was a week where you were like out. I think it was in reverse order. Yeah, but, reverse order. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so we just haven't done one of these in a couple of weeks, but now we have stuff to talk about. So that's cool. Good to be back. Good to be back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so first up on our list for today, uh, we should probably talk about Infinity War. Because like I haven't I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna see it this weekend. Um yeah, no spoilers or anything. Yeah, no we're spoilers. not gonna not gonna spoil or nothing, or else I will just end the show. Um <laughs> But if if you're paranoid and you wanna you wanna stop mute right now, we'll we'll go like this when when we're done. We're gonna forget to that do that. Be. Well, I won't, but these guys will. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on, I got this. I got this. We'll do like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, let's talk about let's talk about Infinity War a little bit. Uh, it's apparently it's doing really really well. It's like the highest grossing opening weekend ever for a film. Which yep yeah. I feel like we heard. I feel like we've been hearing that about Marvel films a lot lately. But uh, the the fact that they're continuing to have such crazy success, it, it kind of implies that they're onto something. Well, I think you were hearing it from Marvel films for a while. And then I, I think it was either Force Awakens or Last Jedi that uh, mm. took it. Because mm-hmm. then I remember seeing a a, a uh, letter that Kathleen Kennedy wrote uh, about handing off the torch, which was a picture of Ray handing off the saber to Luke. And I was like, oh, yeah. congratulations. I'm like, oh, from one Disney department to the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, exactly. Synergy. <laughs> yeah, they did. Uh, as of yesterday, they are at $850 million globally. Uh, and what did it, they actually have an update here that... What was the next second one here? It was the Age of Ultron. Uh, it did 66% more than Age of Ultron, 75, 74% more than Captain America. Uh, yeah, it's just it's basically just like smashing everything. I mean, it's it's everything that they worked for in the past, like, what, 10 years or something. Uh, and I don't know how many films. It was like 20 films or something, 19. right? Night, night. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they just basically put it all into one. So you fucking goddamn right. It better have, like make like just an absurd amount of money. Um, yeah. Thor Ragnarok uh, actually uh, is at 854 million and that's no longer in theaters. Right. And here we have 
uh, Infinity War that is basically passing that on like it's like seventh day, sixth day, <laughs> or something like that. Like, yeah, it's just it really is doing well. It's um, it's interesting to like looking at the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what they've been doing. They've it. I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool to look at it and see them taking what they learned from doing comic books for so long and applying Mm -hmm. it to film where it was like, okay, yeah, you'd have a comic series and you'd have a story arc that goes on for, you know, a few issues in a, in a comic series. Um, but, and it would be like that, that sort of one-off series, like the, uh, maximum carnage or whatever for Spider-Man ages ago. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh God. Wow. And that would like, that would like tie into the whole, um, like that, that would, that would tie into this overarching story that was going on with everything. Whereas for the longest time, it was like, okay, if you're going to make a movie, you might get like six films out of this franchise. If you did like a James Bond or something, you really hit it big or, with a or format, a Harry then Potter. You, you could get even more. But yeah, like for yeah. the most part, it was like, um, like it was crazy that there were six Star Wars films for the longest time, mm-hmm. like, and three of them sucked. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's really cool. It's almost like, so we we had we had movies for the longest time, and that was like if you want if you want to watch something light, you watch a TV show. If you want to watch something heavy, you go see a movie. And then we started getting the serial TV content, um, and like started starting around the late '90s, but really, really that started to boom in the 2000s, um, up until the like early 2010s. Um, and then we ended up with things like Game of Thrones and so on, where it was like, no, you watch every every two hour episode of this. You watch every single one of them. Yeah. And uh, you keep up with the story because the story is it's that sort of like slow burn constant story that's going on. And now it's coming back around full circle back into movies again. Yeah. Just to like just to give like names of like shows like think like MacGyver and Airwolf and Knight Rider. All those were like just one offs. Like every episode was a standalone. It was there was only a handful of episodes where they would like roll things over like when uh when Carr was involved with Knight Rider, okay, they'd maybe have like two episodes. It was like tune in next time. You're like they they basically never yeah. did that in the 70s. They did it too, uh, occasionally. They'd leave you like a cliffhanger or something like that. Oh, no boys, we're gonna blah blah blah. And then boop, and the next one, the Dukes of Hazard, they come right back. You know, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're right. It wasn't until like procedural started happening a lot, like a CSI and everything, where it's like you had still like if you if you like ripped out all of the guts of like uh, all of the uh just kind of like the standalone stuff you still had like a story arc that was progressing with like the csi department itself um and yeah. house house is another great example yeah yeah yeah. and you'd uh i remember like watching star trek the next generation with my parents when i was a kid and they'd always get mad when q came on the screen because they'd be like oh it's gonna be a two-parter oh we're not even gonna get a full episode out of this <laughs> and now nowadays it's like Nowadays, it's like you're not going to get a full episode out of any. You're not going to get a full story out of anything that you watch. That's right. Yeah. Like even even the the shows True. like Brooklyn Nine Nine, which is a hundred percent comedy, or like Parks and Recreation, they still have these overarching stories that are going on the entire time, and they'll have characters that leave or die or whatever. Not necessarily in those shows, but like mm-hmm. the it's just I don't know. It's it it's cool to see. <laughs> This is something that as I've been getting into role play a lot more too, I've really started to enjoy is like No. No. You? But like Chisel, did you know that he was getting role play? <laughs> Who? What? What's role did you know, play? Did, I, uh, did you know that D and D? Yeah, D and D. Yeah. <laughs> um Shut up, Chisel. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> sorry what yeah but no like um you you see the sort of like the way that um in like the gta 5 stuff how you can have a character that like really slowly develops over a long period of time and then eventually one day you're like wait what the fuck this character did what and it's so impactful because you're like yeah that's that guy that's just been driving taxi for the longest period of time what do you mean he up and killed somebody that's fucking crazy and you don't oh get God. that if it's like like um if, if it was if you were to look at that sort of thing in terms of like the old style of content where it's like oh there's a murderer today who drives a taxi it's like okay sure it's a murderer that drives a taxi but i don't know it, it's it's interesting to see how entertainment has slowly gotten slower and slower over time and how that's actually made it more engaging in my opinion yeah yeah you know it's funny yeah i didn't even think about tying in like you could totally tie in you know gtrp into that list i just gave like in terms of progression you know mm. Like it, it, it belongs. It totally belongs. It is, it is a long, you know, drawn out story. It's not fucking super meat boy, you know, where it's yeah. just like you're beating up one level, then boom, you're done in like 
you know, 15 seconds or less. Yeah. Uh, it's an ongoing drama series. Um, like you go back a year and you look at Frank Murdoch as a character who was like, yeah, he's a private eye who occasionally gets into some kind of shady stuff and has sort of a dubious mm -hmm. past to him. And then very recently he died in, uh, in GTA. And it was like this whole big, like what the fuck actually happened to Frank Murdoch over the past couple of months sort of thing. But you're looking at it in a couple of months, not like up in one day, Frank Murdoch got himself shot or something like that. Like, no, it yeah. was this huge buildup and this like massive intense, <sighs> like super emotional moment and everything. And this, that's just coming out of like some guys in their bedrooms playing video games, man. It's, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> But it's it. I don't know. I just thought it was cool how uh, how entertainment has been evolving, and I think Infinity yeah. War and the fact that Infinity War has done so well, despite like you you could probably I haven't seen it yet, like I said, but any Marvel film you can probably go see without having seen any previous ones and be like, okay, I think I kind of understand the story here, but you only really get into it if you've seen a bunch of the previous ones, so you can be like, okay, yeah. yeah. That's Thor. He's relevant for these reasons. Okay, that's Spider-Man. Remember when he did that thing with the shield? Okay, that's relevant to this scene here that's going on here and so on. Um, and the fact that it's clearly working, I think, is cool because that's a type of entertainment, entertainment that I really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, the movie's great. You should totally go see it. Like, seriously, you need to go, I'm gonna go see, see it, it this like, weekend. Just, yeah, yeah. just go. Yeah, yeah. I'm 100% going to go see it this weekend. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm a, it's, I'm and then, I mean, there's so many, it's funny, there's so many, like, memes floating around that are related, but nobody's, like, saying, you know? Like, right. They're just, like, posting the meme, and the people that have seen it, it's kind of like, yeah, you know? <laughs> it's, 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 such, it's such a, like, dramatic part of the film, and so it's like, you see those memes all over, like, with every other movie that comes out, there's always, like, like, Snape kills Dumbledore, or whatever, you know? It's like, there's always, like, those, these, like, memes that come out and just kind of show that, uh, they kind of capitalize on that and stuff like that. But if you haven't seen it, then you don't know what it is, yeah. you know? Uh, so I can't, I can't wait for you to actually go and then, you know, what your reaction is. We'll, we'll meme about good. it afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to go see it. Uh, another thing I'm excited for that's coming up, um, is BlizzCon and, uh, tickets for that are going on sale, uh, next week. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. I can't even keep track anymore. What are um, they like? $500 each now? No, I, I think I honestly, I literally have not looked, but I think they're still the same price. Yeah, um, I, think they're, I, I think I think they're 200 bucks. I could say I think. Yeah, they're 200 bucks. I think they're 200 bucks also. But like I say, I literally have not looked um, mm -hmm. because I haven't had to buy a BlizzCon ticket for myself in a while. So I've, it's always just been like, oh, yeah, that's right. People need BlizzCon tickets. Um, <laughs> again. Ah. Chilly, you should go. You should go to BlizzCon with us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get right on that. Come Back on now, man. Yeah. Or TwitchCon. Getting right on that. Packing right now. <laughs> you should you should you should go to TwitchCon for sure. Uh, it's um, close, man. The it great is. thing is you guys don't know if I'm there or not. <laughs> maybe, That's true. Oh man. Maybe we've met Shizzle like fifty times. <gasps> maybe he uses a voice changer online. No, we've I actually, actually met him a bunch. Not so I'm not there. <laughs> now I don't know if I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, Maybe he's Twitch trying to throw us off the set. A lot of people are freaking out. Like everyone, the trailer came out yesterday. I think it was uh -huh. for uh, Red Dead Two and a game mm. uh, with a, uh, a launch date. And people are like, "Oh my god, I can't go to TwitchCon now." I'm like, "Really? It's only on console." <laughs> you guys are freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, mean, wait, I can is, see. Is, is the release date for that? Yeah, Red Dead Two. Yeah, yeah. The it's the 30th it of October. TwitchCon weekend. <laughs> it's TwitchCon weekend. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, oh, that's what? fucking brilliant. So I can I can see from the perspective of someone who is like a serious top end like variety streamer how you could say okay well now TwitchCon is going to cost me twenty thousand dollars or Everyone something. Everyone I like see that. complaining is a damn RP -er, though. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, that's. It no, doesn't that's, make sense because not only has it not been announced on PC, which I think is not going to come out for at least a solid six months, if not more, after. So Rockstar oh, yeah. can it's, it'll be at least a year, year probably. In my yeah. And then on top of that, they have to then crack it open. And then make their RP servers it's just gonna take a while to get this. So it's like, guys, it's a fucking console game. Yeah. It'll it's, be it's, like don't worry about it. It'll be like three years before you can really RP in that, I would imagine. Unless unless Rockstar is paying attention and like they're building stuff attention. into they're, it they're, for RP. They're, they're, yeah. Basically this entire time they've been trying to figure out how to rename shark cards, but in a Wild <laughs> West theme. <laughs> Horse cards or something. Yeah. Uh, Snake cards. cards. Ooh. Quick draw yeah. card. No, no. I don't know. 
but yeah, BlizzCon uh, tickets go on sale next week. Um, even if you don't manage to score a ticket, it's always a good convention. We say this a lot about all sorts of conventions. Like even if you don't manage to score a ticket to actually get inside the convention, being able to be there and hang out with people is like eighty nine percent of the point of actually going, and you don't have to do Pretty that much. inside. So, yeah. Yep. There's a lot of people that go to BlizzCon who don't have a ticket and just hang out at the Marriott or the Hilton or any number of other areas that are nearby and meet up and then with you people. Just, they, yeah, you stay out all night and you drink and then you sleep in the next day. I mean, the, the best tip really for anybody is, uh, unless it's like unless it's like your first time going, uh, is just to stay 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 in your hotel and watch the opening ceremony, like just from yes. your laptop, and and then. That way you could you see the opening ceremony, you have the best seat in the house. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's not as good as being in the crowd, but seriously, if you've been to like five or six of these things, just do yourself a favor and just stay at home and just watch yeah. the damn the, the, the thing. Just stay in your hotel. Then go when there's no line. Uh yeah. It's it, I I'm looking forward to I'm always I'm always looking forward to BlizzCon. Uh I've been to all except for like one. Um and uh and yeah, if if there was ever a point where I didn't get a ticket for some reason. Uh, I would still go because it's just like I would just end up at yeah, the bars yeah. and then I would just be able to sleep in even more the next day and yeah. catch up on Twitter when I wake up and that's it. It's easy. Yeah. Like if you really want to see everything, just sit in your hotel room, watch the virtual ticket, ping around between stuff and then mm -hmm. go afterwards. Like go out with people afterwards. I did and that I, last last year. Actually, I did. I I actually did spend more time watching the virtual ticket than I did like at BlizzCon, mind you, mm. <laughs> than I did actually like on the floor. This makes yeah. sense. This makes sense. It's the way to do it. And it is like, that's basically all conventions for me nowadays. Like, there isn't... Like, I, I may end up going up to LA for E3. I am extremely unlikely to actually walk in the door of E3 <laughs> when that happens. Right. Because I'm, I'll, like, I'll go up there to hang out with the people that are in town. Absolutely. That sounds like a real fun time. All of the announcements and everything. Like, I'm not going to stand in line to play an early access demo version of a game that's going to be out in six months. Like, yeah, there is not a video game that I'm that excited about to stand in line for. It does not exist. That's the point, though, is they're supposed to announce those at E3. But yeah, unless they have a hands on sure. as well as the announcement, which is like, eh. even if they have a hands on, though, like I if it's not going to be out for that, I, I don't I maybe I'm just a jaded old ass hat. But there there could not they could not announce a game there. I, I honestly don't think they could announce a game there that I would stand in line to to play. Like they could they could say, here's Mass Effect four which retcons oh, the end of Mass Effect. No, it's not going to happen. Oh, but, oh, that like, retcons the end of Mass Effect 3? Okay, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, retcons yeah, the end of Max, Mass Effect 3. <laughs> Turns out it was the indoctrination theory the entire time. It's exactly what Mike and I were thinking about, and I would be like, oh man, I can't wait to play that when it releases. <laughs> <laughs> I am not standing in line for this early. shit. Uh, I just, no, I, yeah, I hate like lines. That, they're not going to give you the intro. They're not going to give you an intro. They don't want to give you a demo level, which is being like the most exactly, game. Yeah. You wouldn't have any context. It'll be multiplayer. So the There's us. a game you would stand in line for. I don't know what it is because they haven't announced yet, but you would, there is one. Yeah. I'm not saying you're going to get it, though. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. I'll be in Vegas that week. I'll be in Vegas that week. No E3 nice. for me. Nice. Yeah. Um. Moving on. Something that you guys have been playing a lot of, and I still don't understand the appeal of, but we can get to that. Maybe you guys can win me over in this conversation. <laughs> Stardew Valley, the multiplayer mm -hmm. version came out. Um, so, I was talking about this in DigiWho ages ago. I don't mm -hmm. understand the appeal of Stardew Valley. To me, it's very boring. But you guys have been playing a lot of it. So what's, what's the deal? What's the deal? Before here? Mike says anything, I agree, Lore. <laughs> <laughs> Someone gave me the copy of the game back in March uh, 2016 because it was like, oh, the new hype. And I'm like, I'm not I'm not paying for that game. It's like I've literally lived that the whole living on a farm, fucking mm. take, take all the care of that shit. It's like, I don't <laughs> fucking want to do that in my free time. So he gives me a copy. I'm like, all right, I'll humor him and give him at least an hour. 62 minutes on my record. Yeah. And that was it. And I was like, fuck it. I'm out. <laughs> um, but I knew I'm like, okay, I could see the potential because I watched enough of other, you know, variety streamers that I watched because I'll just watch whatever they play. I watched them get far enough in. I knew like, oh, there's actually combat. There's actually some other shit to it. Um, like, okay, I guess I could see that being interesting if they ever added co-op. And then I think shortly after release, they actually, uh, you know, said, hey, it's coming eventually. I'm like, all right, 
I said back then to Mike, I'm like, all right, if it comes out of the cup, I'll try it again. And so here we are. And it's actually not bad, but mostly in the fuck around with your friends kind of way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like there really is no way to like explain Stardew Valley that doesn't make it sound boring. <laughs> like it's true. It's true. I mean, unless, unless you're talking to someone that's played Harvest Moon and that likes that game, right? Like there is no way to explain the game that makes it sound interesting. Here's what Shizzle and I do. We wake up. I run out. I, I, I start watering all the plants. Shizzle bolts to the mines, starts basically just beating up slimes and just mining all day. Uh, if I if I run out of things, if I if I if I finish watering everything, then I might go fish for a little bit uh, or run to town to like, I don't know, go see some go see the blacksmith or to do something. Actually, that's, that's Shizzle's job. Like Shizzle has his own set of chores. <laughs> I've always said. It's seriously it's it's it is like and it's funny because like apparently because we're supposed to get married at some point, Shizzle and I. Uh, but, but don't tell anybody. Um, but it's funny cause we are actually kind of living that like roommate life where it's like, we, we are kind of both contributing, like, you know, I have the things that I do and she does the things that he does. And there's no way to explain this in a way that makes it sound like, wow, I have to get down on some of that, <laughs> but it works. It just fucking works. It just works. Uh, animal crossing yeah, animal. Cro yeah. It's basically, if you've played the kind of game before, then you have an understanding of it at least, but to play, explain it to somebody who has not, it doesn't sound interesting. Can we talk about how you and Shizzle are getting married? <laughs> Listen, all right. Someone, I think we were, we were walking by a vendor and we saw a recipe for a wedding ring. Mm -hmm. And then Chad was like, yeah, you guys can get married. I'm like, ha, there aren't enough bits in the world for that. <laughs> uh, and Sume was watching. And was like, how much do you need? And I was like, come out with a gold badge. And so. <laughs> Sume, well, shit. I clearly Sume, should have put my uh, number. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. I think been, technically it's all right. We're I think we just eloped, I guess, because like I got a glow ring from the mine, which is basically just like a self like <laughs> light producing right. ring. And I had it from like day one of the mines, and Mike was super fucking mad about not having one. And I got one finally, like a hundred something levels down the mine finally. And so I came back and I fucking just dropped it in his house, like on the floor, and walked out so that he stumbled over it on the way in. Yeah, it was. And like, and it's what's like, this? What's this? And I was like, I got a promotion at work. I told you it has perks. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and he's like, is this is this a proposal? I'm like, I, you know, I just ring, but okay, whatever. Uh, so this is a su surprise proposal. All no ceremony. No one got invited. It was like, no, I didn't get invited. No one was invited. <laughs> Mike's not even sure he's married. I'm not even sure. I'm not, not even sure yet. Uh, no, but it's it's the thing is like it's it's fun. Like it, it's it's just it's chill, you know. Uh, I don't know. Like I don't watch enough GTRP to really compare it to that level of like how much shit you do versus how much action actually happens. Uh, but you know there are like clutch moments here and there, and it usually involves like trying to squeeze as much shit into one day because once two a.m. hits, you pass out wherever you're at, and you end up losing shit, right? Um, if you if you pass out in the mines, you end up losing shit. So there's there, there's still like a threat that things could happen. Uh, there's also like prep for uh, you know there's like completionist things that you want you want to do, and you want to do it before like the season ends, and so you're basically trying to cram a bunch of shit into one day. Uh, in order to, you know, to basically progress. So that way, because if you miss the deadline, like let's say for like for example, there's like a completionist thing that says you have to collect uh like five five like uh, uh gold star uh um of a single like a vegetable or something like that that's only in season for like you know a uh, uh, spring. Okay, so let's let's plant a ton of those to and then let's let's make sure we take care of them and, and nurture them that way we could potentially get a fire a gold star. Okay, good, we got it. Now we go turn it in. If we don't get that in time within the month and season changes, we have to wait till the next year. So there's still like even though it's like it's 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 a very laid back and kind of relaxing and, and just kind of a chill game to play with, with a friend. Uh, it still is there is still like a kind of an overarching kind of uh, expediency that you have to kind of maintain. It's like you can't just dick off and not do anything, otherwise. You'll be, I mean, Shizzle and I were broke for the longest fucking time. We had like no money. We were trying to figure out how to like make some money. We were like just planning a bunch of shit. I'm out there watering all fucking day trying to get the shit going. So it's like there is, there is a lot to do in the game. And it is, I mean, in my opinion, it's fun. I've, I've logged now with, Sh with Shizzle, like what, 12 hours, I think, when you and I have it in together just in multiplayer. Yeah, something like that. And again, this is the, the thing is, like, I, I've only played an hour and that was two years ago. It was over two years ago. It was March 1st, 2016, last Steam set I played. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know a fucking thing about the game other than it's like, hey, 
I've seen other people play this. I know that I know kind of like what's involved in the game. That's about it. So the fact that Mike's put in so many hours on with the switch and shit, it's like, OK, it, 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 I don't know. I guess it uh, he's able to easily fucking tell us what the hell to do. Yeah, the, the switch was a turning point for me, too. If anybody's wondering, mm-hmm. like what you should get it on, if you have a switch, like get it on there. It's uh, being able to play it because again, because of the pacing of the game, because you can stop playing whenever, whenever uh, it's perfect for the switch. You know, it's, it's just chill. It's relaxed. It's not like a fast, but fast paced bullshit, you know? Um, and so that was a turning point for me. Cause I think I, even I had like basically no time at all whatsoever, uh, like maybe an hour or something like that on the PC version, just enough for like a BFF report or something or, or uh, um, like a, any for breakfast. Uh, and then after that, uh, I just gave up just like chisel and then switch came out. Changed my life. <laughs> Start playing shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, I just like in the single player version. Like I got it on Switch as as well. I've only ever played it on Switch, and uh-huh. I I just don't think I have the attention span for it. Like I will literally, I'll be in the middle of doing something, and I'll be like, okay, now I have to go over to the town, and I will forget what that thing was by the time I oh walk to town every fucking time. Yes, and that like <laughs> after doing that like twelve times and getting over there and being like, wait, what am I doing? Why am I here? What's going on? I've forgotten already. And then I'm like, all right, I guess I'll walk back. And that takes like half a day. And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I got tired of it. <laughs> it that was, part sucks. Yes. Yeah. Maybe, Many times I'm like writing on my hand. It's, it's like, almost turnips, certainly, blueberries. it's almost certainly a game that I haven't played long enough for it to get good. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of a pet peeve of mine is a game that you have to play for a while for it to become good because I don't want to put 20 hours into a game to enjoy my, the remaining 20 hours that I will be interested in the game mm-hmm. personally. Um, but the multiplayer aspect is actually really interesting to me. I may have to check that out at some point. I think it's like three people uh, is the ma- we only have three houses on the lot. So well, I'm assuming think, it's only like three I people. I heard it was four. I just think we didn't actually build the last house for whoever. Mm. Except hmm. heard four. Hmm. By the way, if you, you know what? No, because, you know, just, you know, if you want to join us, let us know. Another. Okay. I will. I will let you know if I ever tear myself away from GTA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I came to the, the realization yesterday, like, I don't actually think I've played another game in like three weeks. <laughs> we we noticed. We yeah, noticed. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I that's not true. I have been playing other games. I just haven't been streaming them. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Speaking of other games. Brilliant segue right there in the show that's mostly about games. <laughs> Speaking of the next topic. Um, so there's this whole drama going on right now with Halo. I guess it's kind of over now at this point, but this whole Halo online. Yeah, it lasted all like three days. Mod thing versus Microsoft. So basically, if I'm understanding the entire situation correctly, um, which I, I, I was reading up on it, but. Uh, so there's a mod basically to play the original Halo One online. Uh, Want to break it down? On P- yeah, yeah, go, go for, for it. it. So you I think it was a couple years ago that a weird uh, 343 project kind of dropped out of nowhere, only for Russian gamers. It was called Halo Online. So it was like basically kind of like gauging the Russian market, if I recall, for like their interest in Halo and if they they should kind of like do something for them and also like just to kind of gauge like how everyone else would react to it on like PC. And I think it kind of flopped. I'm pretty sure they shut it down pretty fast, but not before the modders and the hackers decided to capture as much data as they could and get uh, basically a hold of the client as well as, you know, capture enough packet data to make their own server. So over the last couple of years now, they've been uh, developing uh, what they call El Dorito. Do as a Mountain Dew and Rito as in like Dorito because <laughs> the um initial uh, I think it was Halo 2 or maybe it was Halo 3. Um, well, one of them, the initial like a uh, game client was called or the project was called a uh, project El, El Dorado, so they're you know kind of uh <laughs> parroting that. So, over the last couple of years, they've been like kind of like it initially got shut down when they first like announced it, I think, uh, under a different name. And it's been quietly plugging away anyways. And then they kept. <laughs> I see the goddamn. <laughs> <Google Doc laughs> Sorry. Updating. Where, where, where time it anyway. Anyways, uh, so they've been kind of plugging away. And I think it was a couple weeks ago. The latest big update for it came out. <laughs> point six. Um, yeah, point six. And it basically made it super playable. I had a server browser and everything. I don't remember 
uh, how much uh, or what was exactly playable prior, but I saw it. and I was like, OK, I'll give it a go. So I downloaded it. And yeah, it's it's working Halo 3 on PC. And it was pretty And smooth. it works really well. Mm. Um, like, it, it works has, like, really fucking well. It obviously doesn't have the campaign. But yeah, they basically fully re-engineered uh, from the Halo Online client, which was kind of like a mashup between Halo 3 and 4, mostly Halo 3 with a little bit of 4 assets. They fully engineered a working Halo 3 uh, on PC with the, all the options you would expect from like a PC game. And it mm-hmm. feels exactly like it did. Back in fucking 2009 and 2010, it's like I, I played it. I was like, you know, nostalgia's not really there for me. I played the shit out of this. I put, I played the shit out of fucking Halo Three. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, playing on PC, I was like, you know, kind of done with it. So I put it like <laughs> I put it a little bit down. Um, and this was after seriously considering. Like I was downloading. It. I'm like, yeah, this is cool. I loved it, man. If I if I can find a server with like infection mode or whatever, I'm gonna stream the fuck out of this. And I played them like, you know, man, I'm really just not into it anymore. You know, like it's just it felt kind of wonky um, not having like an ADS because that's this type of shooter that Halo is. For yeah, most part, yeah. You know, outside of like yeah. a, having like a scope weapon. It's like it felt weird. And I was like, you know, maybe if I had some buddies, maybe. But I'm not now. I, I kind of just put and I put it down literally the next day. We got yeah. all kinds of news about like. Big name streamers and a bunch of small streamers as well, all getting hit with DMCA takedowns on Twitch because they had streamed the game. Yeah. And uh, this, and then right, I think it was a couple of days later, uh, 343 put out a message. Oh, no, it was actually right before the DMCAs. 343 put out a message on, uh, was it Halo Waypoint, which is like their community like uh, platform. <clears throat> and like, hey, we see what you're doing with the, uh, you know, El Dorito. Uh, we, we really like the passion and whatnot. But yeah just fyi microsoft probably not gonna like it and like i think the same day the dmca started happening mm. so like i think 343 is like okay with it but obviously microsoft uh being you know the ones who actually hold like the copyright they gotta have to go after people so i think they tried to start shutting it down but uh i think the people who got dmca at least uh, it was only a temporary one but yeah it was a whole big big mess so and playable though you yeah on whatnot. not only is it still playable it will always be playable because it's peer to peer and there is literally nothing that Microsoft could do to stop it. So because it's out there in the wild and it's not hard to find a link to download it uh, because most of the links are being torn, you know, taken down, obviously. Uh, I mean, it's it's always going to work because it's peer to peer. So it's just always going to be there, um, which is like that's got to fucking sting Microsoft. It really because because this exists and because it really is like it is it's just halo 3 on, online on pc and it runs really well and it's it looks great uh and it's super easy to get into a match uh because of all those things now microsoft has to figure out how do we how do we make that but at the same time monetize it now they could just come out with just basically this exact same thing and throw it in a box and just charge fifty bucks for it, and they'd probably make a killing, right? But that doesn't exist anymore in like in like this in, this industry like landscape currently. Like, yeah, I know that doesn't exist anymore. So they're gonna have to figure out like how, where is the line where like they could find some way to uh, you have this game as a service or with microtransactions or with fucking loot boxes or whatever the hell they want to do, uh, but still maintain what just these modders have been able to achieve on their own. Yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of companies have started actually really looking into it, like especially uh, you look at things like um, AM2R, which is the Metroid 2 remake, uh, the fan mm-hmm. game that was made. Um, and since fan games have been such a thing lately, which, by the way, are almost always illegal in some capacity or another. But yeah. um, because they're like almost every always Mario Kart like redo yeah, exactly. has always been taken down. Yeah, Um But I know a lot of companies have started looking at it and being like, okay, hang on. These like six guys were able to cobble this together. Why don't we just pay six guys and do this ourselves? Um, And so like uh, you look at things like the um, Starcraft Reloaded, uh, which came out uh, last year sometime. Uh, That was something that it was a small team at Blizzard that was just like, let's just make Starcraft that works in the in a modern market and up-res it a little bit. Um, and we'll put it out there. And that's sort of taking that general philosophy. Um, I I should throw in a disclaimer. I have nothing to do with StarCraft Reloaded whatsoever. So I'm just kind of guessing at it. But still, remastered. Mm-hmm. I keep saying Reloaded. Remastered. 
Um, <laughs> see, that's how that's how much I don't that's know how about how much you're involved. Mastered, <laughs> <laughs> as I say the wrong word, it's like a like a shitty Matrix movie. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, oh, it's true. It's true. Yeah, it is. But what's interesting here is I, I was just reading through their their press release again, the one that um, three forty three put out. Um, and they actually call out a few other sort of like fan projects that had gone out in the past or are currently in process. Um, so they talk about uh, Halo Custom Edition, which was uh, an add on to the original Halo on PC um, that add, added like modding and content creation to it. Um, it wasn't really an add on. That's actually just how it launched on PC back in the day. It was literally like I have a disc <laughs> literally called Halo Custom Edition because like the default game on the Xbox was Halo Combat Evolved CE. Yeah. And then Custom Edition was literally just like it's just what the actual like disc envelope had on it. Oh, okay. Because they like it already had they actually bundled like, it, it was with all the game. okay with modding and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like You could actually get um, I want to say the uh, fuel rod gun you could actually have it on halo on pc legit without modding even though it wasn't on the xbox that was like one of the interesting and, things about it and just just to kind of like go further back in history um this is not unusual for the like the bungee devs right like the basically the bungee team at the time for the first halo game right uh marathon actually also came with its own tools where you could basically change or add or build whatever the fuck you want coincidentally also called forge but in the name spelt in the in the in the name of the actual alien race called the four. So it was P-F-H-O-R-G-E or something like that. it was some uh, fucking ridiculous spelling. Um, and so, yeah, like that was that was just a thing that people just came to expect from Bungie at the time, like because they had such a powerful modding tool that shipped with Marathon in like 1994. Uh, and of course, with every subsequent Marathon after that. Uh, of course, you know, they would include it in uh, with with Halo combat and combat evolved in custom edition and Roscoe's uh, chicken and, uh, and waffles hashtag. Uh. <laughs> when I accidentally hit the wrong button. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah it's I, I miss those days <laughs> when everything came with like a builder of some sort. Uh, Doom yeah. Ed and all that. Yeah. Um. I think it's interesting uh some of the other like comparisons they do. Uh, part of why I find this so interesting is because uh as someone who is fairly involved with DMCA stuff for Blizzard, like it's always interesting to me to see how other companies end up handling these things. Um so they talk about how they have this thing called Installation 01 um mm -hmm. which uh has actually been given a thumbs up from 343 um and said that yep, no that's fine, that's good to go. Um, I, if I recall, I, if because uh, I did a little bit of reading on it when the, all this was going down, if I recall, I want to say installation was it zero one, right? Yeah, yeah. That was fully okay because they recreated everything. The yeah. problem with Halo Online is that they actually straight up ripped Halo exactly, Online yeah. assets, which mm. were actual, you know, three four three slash Bungie slash Microsoft actual created assets. Yeah. So installation oh one. Um, I'm just sort of looking at the website here. Um, it looks like for the most part, hang on one second, I'll pull up the website here in a second for you guys as soon as I fix my settings here. Um, it looks like for the most part, it is like, like this, you can tell it's, it's meant to look like a, a Spartan, but it's a little bit different in certain That's ways. That's Just, I'm just, you know. Sure. Same. Yeah. It's meant to look like Halo, but you can tell it's a little bit different. Um, this is obviously meant to look like the Halo, but they've added a little bit to it, right? Like it's mm -hmm. it's close. Who's getting triggered? What? Who's getting triggered? What? Sorry, go ahead. And like, I mean, this one down here is obviously meant to look a little bit like Metroid. Um, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> dropping the call. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, go on, go on. I'm just calling mm -hmm. things. I haven't actually played a Halo game in a long time. Um, but yeah. So it looks like for whatever reason, 343 looked at this and they said, okay, yeah, you're fine. They probably ended worked out some sort of like licensing deal or something like that. Um, to make sure that it was completely on the up and up. But they said this is fine, and like you were saying with Halo Online, it was it was basically leaked source code that um, yeah. they they even call out here. They like people seem to think that for whatever reason this became open source when it was canceled. That's not how canceling a project works. What's wrong with you people? Um, it just means we're not going to release it. That's all. Yeah. Um, 
taking their toys and they're going home. Yeah, and it's not abandoned wear because Halo is still a actively used trademark. Um, it only becomes abandoned wear if the trademark actually expires. So, um, and they even call out that Microsoft was issuing takedown notices when Halo Online was originally released or originally leaked so you can't even you can't sometimes with these sort of things you can sort of argue the angle of well you didn't stop this thing back then so what makes it okay for you to stop this thing now uh because you've set a legal precedent now for this that's part of why um a lot of times you see these like little little harmless fan games that just get completely shut down Mm -hmm. uh because it's like okay yeah um like a a great example that um, i like to use when i try to explain this stuff is Okay, yeah, sure. You've got a WoW private server for your 12 friends. All right, whatever. You're not going to do you're not going to damage Blizzard with your WoW private server for your 12 friends. But if it's okay for you to make a WoW private server, then it's okay for Riot Games to make a WoW private server. And yeah. like the the law doesn't really see a difference between how many people are using it. It's not a a lot of people like to say you can lose your copyright. That's not actually what happens. You you maintain your copyright. You just can lose your ability to defend it in court. Um, so, yeah, um, that's why that's why I find this whole thing interesting is that they, they've they've actually made some concessions here with the IP in terms of things like installation 01 and saying that that's OK. But um, in the case of the actually stolen content that was used to develop Halo Online uh, or or. Uh, the actual the stole the Halo Online was the stolen content to to make El Dorito, uh, yeah they decided not to do it. But they did say in this press release that they're looking into, um, the possibility of actually just doing it themselves, which um should be good news for people who are excited about this. Well, at least less bad news, yeah, for people who are excited <clears> about <throat> this. Much work, honestly, considering whatever Halo Six is. I already have Windows uh, games for Windows. Like I wanted to send, like all I have to do is just, hey, we'll just turn it on for this game because half of the Xbox One lineup, like of new games, is already available on PC. They just have to turn it on. So, yeah. I mean, it's not going to fix the nostalgia for a lot of people have for Halo Three, but I mean, people could already get like a lot of that out of Halo Six, especially with the the Forge and whatnot. So, imagine people could create the experience they wanted over there. You mean Halo Xbox Six Battle something. Royale Edition? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Not everything needs a battle royale. Well, apparently you're wrong about that. Hand off. You're welcome. <laughs> we planned that one. <laughs> I love the title of the I'm just going to I'm just going to pull up this article because the the way that PC Gamer has phrased this is great. They say MOBA Brawler Battle Right is getting a battle royale mode. Welcome to 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I think even in the intro, <laughs> the intro for the show uh, here, like one of the last jokes that shows up in like the little intro thing is PUBG adds Battle Royale mode <laughs> 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 because fucking everything's adding a Battle Royale mode. Why not have a Battle Royale game add a Battle Royale mode? Yeah. Wow. I've, who knows? I find it entertaining that this one's called Battle Right also. Like, obviously, Battle Right's been around for a while now. Um, <clears throat> yeah. it's, it's kind of like a... Bullet like Champions. Yeah, exactly. Very. That was the game I was trying to think of, Bloodline Champions, where it's like, it's um, it's a MOBA minus most of a MOBA, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it's, it's WoW Arena, but in League of Legends format. You exactly. Know? Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You go in and you fight, but that's hundred percent all that you do. Yeah. Um. But now they're they're sort of taking. It is an interesting take on the battle royale mode to put it to a top down sort of point and click um gameplay style. How do you guys think that cause they they've given us basically no information like they've. Uh, um, essentially just said um, we want to give players the excitement of a Diablo esque exploration experience, which is a, a weird way to describe their game combined with the character variation of a MOBA and the thrill of a survival game. Anyone who's looking for a fresh and different take on the battle royale genre will have a blast um, and it's going to be 10 minute matches, 20 players. Um, and a, a bigger map than is normally in the game. Um, nah. Loot Path what you find. Path of Exile already done it with 100 people. Who did? Well, yeah, that's that's the interesting thing is Path, Path of Exile. Who, who? Path of Exile. They oh. packed together a Battle Royale mode in a day, put it out yeah. there, and people were like, yo, that's fun. April Fool's, yeah. Yo, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and they did 100 people. 
I tried it. I got my ass fucking handed to me because I'm a horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible casual at that game for the most part. At least in that. But it, I saw the potential. I'm like, this is interesting for people who actually are good at the game. Like, I just... Mm-mm. I yeah. play the fuck out of it during regular leagues and whatnot, but that, like, man, I could never get any fucking single piece of loot, man. It was, it was, just, <laughs> it was the worst. So, so I, I played a bit of uh, of Battle Right, quite a bit actually, I think. Um, and like, it's it's a really fun like action pack. It does feel a lot like WoW Arena, and it, it, but obviously trimmed down skills and whatnot. But it just in kind of like the way the arena is set up and uh, just how you engage, the pillar humping, all that stuff is there, right? Um, it's it plays really fucking well. Uh, some of the abilities you have, the crowd control stuff, I can imagine like if you get into a match with like twenty other people, like just how much crazy shit you could do. Uh, I think I think that it, it this is actually going to be pretty fun. I mean. 20 players already when it's 3v3 it's it's pretty hectic and that's just three people fighting other another three people right there's no like cross contamination there but if you have 20 people where it's just like no holds barred everyone sniping everybody i feel like that's there's a lot i mean there's a lot of potential for a lot of fun and a lot of just mayhem to go on there now you know the the mayhem part that could be overkill for some people it might be like yeah well there's just so much shit going on i just don't even know what's happening i just die and that's it's over right it might be too much for some people depending so i'm curious like how how big the map is uh because it does say it says it's the map's 30 times larger than the standard arena mode map now the standard arena mode map is not that big but 30 times any map is fucking significant. So I'm I, I'm interested. I'm super interested in actually seeing how this plays. I will definitely check it out when I, when it actually releases. It's only 10 minute matches too, so they're super quick. Yeah, yeah that's that's a very interesting uh take on it too, because it means I don't I actually don't know I don't know that I would like a 10 minute battle royale game. I mean, I say that I drop school every time or Hacienda and get killed in like the first <laughs> 30 seconds, but I don't know that yeah. I I feel like a big part of what makes a game like PUBG or Fortnite or H1Z1, etc. really engaging is that sort of like, okay, I've been building up for a while and now this is the final moment at the end. And it, that I feel like the final moment at the end doesn't feel as... I worry that it won't feel as engaging when it happens so frequently. If it's uh-huh. just like, oh, well, that 10-minute game is over with. Let me try another 10-minute game here real quick. I don't know. I'm... I will be interested to see whether or not that actually is fun or if you just end up losing a lot of the the um, the tension that you get from. Oh, man, I fucking I finally found a sniper suppressor. This is going to be great. I'm going to be so good in the final circle. Oops, I got shot out of nowhere and died. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's not a shooter, right? So, like, anytime that you're not gonna get like just sniped out of nowhere. Like, yeah. if if you die, it's after you engage with somebody. You actually have an opportunity to defend yourself. So that's why it's like calling it a battle royale. It's like you 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 draw on these things. Like some people are like, oh, I hate like going out there and just like being sniped and I'm dead. Yeah. Or you know, uh, I just basically wait and some wait in a building for someone to come in and shoot him with a shotgun. You know, uh, like that's that's not a thing with this. So that's that's what makes it completely different. The the battle royale name is really just a, a way of just saying you know, oh, we have last man standing. You know, because it's not it's not battle royale in the traditional sense. But adding it to that pool, though, right, by coming out and saying, yeah, calling it a battle royale, adding a few features from battle royale, but still maintaining their own, you know, their unique play style, uh, just, I think, just kind of further now kind of diversifies the battle royale genre as a whole, which is good, because then somebody else might look and say, well, if Battle Right did it, which is not a first-person shooter, uh, and, and before this, they were pretty much all first-person shooters, except for, of course, PoE, um, it's like, we might we might see you know somebody made a joke in chat saying stardew uh battle royale you know like not saying that's a good idea but it something in that realm of like well that's a really strange thing to make a battle a battle royale but let's fucking give it a shot and see how it works i think it's, there's there's it opens a door to basically for people to be able to go and try different things yeah so um speaking of battle royale games um, so two things. One, as I was looking at this article a second ago, I found a list of, on PC Gamer of Battle Royale games in 2018. And it's just a fun list to read through because there's so goddamn many of them. And there's yeah. some that I didn't even know were a thing. Like, uh, obviously there's Fortnite, PUBG, H1Z1. Everybody knows about those. Yeah. Radical Heights in Early Access, Darwin Project. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one called Maelstrom, which I guess is a Battle Royale game, but on boats. That seems interesting. Like, so halfway between battle royale and 
uh, Sea of Thieves, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's one called Survivio, which appears to have been made in Flash. Um, oh my god. Wait, is it, is it, is it IO? Like the... Yeah, yeah, survive.io. Survive.io. Oh uh-huh. Um, there's one called SOS. Um, there's one called Standout, which is uh, it's actual virtual reality. Jesus. So that'll be interesting to see how well it works out in I VR. I want to say Standout is basically a PUBG clone in VR. Yeah, it seems like it, based on the, the little clip that they've got here. Um, there's one called Survival Games Battle Royale, which is... I mean, that's the... We just collected all of the words that describe this game and made that the title. But it's like Minecraft looking. I don't know. It's weird. Um, <clears throat> like voxel sort of appearance. Um, there's one called Dying Light Bad Blood. Uh, which is like a uh, it's a BR mode for Dying Light. Like um, eight people or six people. It's meh. Yeah, six players. Well, I mean, it, so it's not it's not, it's not really but I mean these are all these are all games it is, that it take is better, the, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different variants to it, that's for sure. Yeah. Islands of Nine is one that um we've actually seen some people doing pre alpha streams of it, which side note, game developers, please stop letting people stream your pre alpha games. All it does is make people not excited to ever play your game ever. Which oh, is man. the experience that I got out of watching <laughs> someone play Isles uh, Islands of Nine. Mm. Is when I was like, Well, this game might be fun in Two years. Two, three years. Yeah. God damn it. Oh, that's just a painful thing. It some is. Some of that shit's fucking planned, though. You know it is. Like, Man, hey, yeah, we, yeah, we got enough here to make a splash, make some money. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's. You see, you, when I see someone allowing. When I see someone allowing a stream of a game that will not, even at a breakneck pace, breakneck pace, will not be released for two or three years, that to me says they don't know that they're going to make it to release. So they need the money right now is what that boils down to. That's why they don't have an NDA on it or anything. Either that or they're just dumb and didn't think of it. Um, apparently Paladins, A, still exists, and B is adding a Battle Royale mode. Um, that's interesting. Uh-huh. Um, Battle Roy Royale, Royale we were just talking about. There's one called Europa, which is being developed by Tencent, which is weird. That's because an actual PUBG clone. And it's, yeah, and that one, like, Tencent also... Owns PUBG. Tencent owns both, yeah, yeah. PUBG and, and Fortnite. Yeah. But I guess Tencent's business model is just own everything. That way you always make money. Make more of the thing that's popular. They've yeah. done that forever. There's one called Pavlov. They have countless mobile, MOBAs. Pavlov VR. Yep. It's like a CSGO type VR. Yep. Uh, Mavericks. Proving Grounds. That's not out yet. That's supposed to be 400 people to 1,000 people VR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Slash it's, MMO. These, this is just a list of games that are slated to come out in 2018 or be playable in 2018. Um, and so the Mavericks one is supposed to be uh, beta sometime this summer. And this isn't, isn't even counting things like... Um, uh, God, what's that random ass one that I downloaded for my phone? Uh, oh, I uninstalled it because it sucked. All right, I forgot. Um, but like, there's a whole bunch of like mobile Battle Royale games that are available now. It's... it's Everyone kind of knows that Battle Royale is the the sort of hot thing to develop right now. But I don't mm -hmm. think like until I was looking at this list, it didn't really occur to me just how much of a glut of these things we have right now. Yeah. And it's only it's only going to get how I want to say worse. Right. But it's only going to get more diversified. Yeah, yeah. And at least a lot of these are at least coming up with interesting new like hooks on it. Like there's one that's mm -hmm. on ships and that sure that sounds interesting. Like I would be totally down for Sea of Thieves style Battle Royale. It's like, not Sea of Thieves. It's like World of Warships. I, God, Sea of Thieves Battle Royale would be fucking awesome, though. They should add a, they, they should add a Battle Royale mode to they Sea of Thieves. Totally just fucking It'd do be it. worth 60 bucks then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I had so much fun playing that game for like the, the five minutes of content that they had. Like, it was just yeah. so fucking great for five fucking minutes. It's oh, like, man. um, it's like Star Trek Bridge Crew. If you can really yeah. get into the sort of like, like I could see someone who is really into, they just want to be a fucking pirate and mm -hmm. that person will play Sea of Thieves for a long time and really enjoy it. Someone who just really wants to be on the Starship Enterprise or be a Star Trek person, whatever they're called, uh, wants to be in Starfleet, would <laughs> love a uh, uh, Star Trek bridge crew and play the shit out of it. Anyone who's looking for game, <laughs> <laughs> you'd like to play a video game. Yeah. Then maybe not. Maybe not any of those. 
Um, last thing that we were going to quickly hit on today is just this whole thing has been going on with Daybreak. Quickly. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, how to how to quickly uh, because there's kind of a lot of shit that's going on here. Um, so it started with they laid off a whole bunch of uh, laid off a whole off, uh, laid off a whole bunch of employees. But then there's right. this whole like weird connection or potential Didn't connection. Layoff come like a day or two after though. It was no the no yeah. the layoffs happened the day before, and mm. then all oh, the shit it? hit the fan the following day. Yeah. So the U.S. U.S. Treasury Department put sanctions against Victor uh, Victor Vexelberg, Vexelberg. who yeah. is an oligarch in Russia, basically a guy with a lot of money that owns basically a ton of shit, um, for malign and destabilizing activities. I wonder related to what we won't get into that. Uh, and so his U.S. assets have been frozen. He owns a company investment group called Columbus Nova. Columbus Nova uh, and its parent company. Uh, Columbus Nova is who had acquired and I guess created uh, Daybreak Daybreak Games and um, and you know and, and all their properties that they decided to take the uh, uh, with Hizzy. Um, uh, they can't. They like they actually like chunked fucking like EverQuest next. I think, uh, and I think Planetside is still uh, is still part of that. But but part of Hizzy is actually separate. I think like Just Survive does not belong in Daybreak or something. I don't know. One of them. Anyways, uh, so all this stuff happened, and then and then all of a sudden Daybreak's like, no, no, we don't. We're not owned by them. No, what? We're not. <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And everyone's like, no, what are, you, what are you talking about? There's like years of articles here that show. Yeah. You said it yourself in your own <laughs> press release. No, we didn't delete it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They told, and they did. They did. They said that was an error and they deleted it. And they just and never was, got around to correcting it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was just this one guy who used to work for them. Yeah, that's what they said. They said that they were, um, that, that it was sold to somebody who was part of that group, but not necessarily to the group. Yeah. And so it just seems really really shady like that all of a sudden like they're just trying to distance themselves and i feel like okay if if the u.s treasury department is like locking assets of the of, of basically the entire parent company then you kind of guess don't have a choice you know like find the find the person that has assets that are not frozen and basically say yeah yeah you 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 we're, we're with you now we're with you now okay we're going with you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's basically yeah. what it is it's it's really fucking crazy that and it seems and it seems like so blatant a lie you know that they would just try to come out and say no nah, we're not that's not us mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i mean what's they got caught like i think editing their own like wiki articles and whatnot mm -hmm. got like their ip bands um man, it was just it's not looking good yeah they yeah said since then it's like oh yeah it's not gonna affect us we'll be fine minus you know the layoffs obviously yeah, All of our games are gonna be good still. And there's like, um, there's an article on MMO Bomb, which is written by Jason Winter, actually. Yeah. And he's like, if everything's fine, why is no one talking on the record about this? Like, a hundred percent of the information that's coming out of Daybreak comes from a source at Daybreak. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I feel super bad for those guys because, like, it's always, always, like, especially the. Like, not necessarily the leadership who likely caused this whole issue in the first place, but, like, the people who are just working at Daybreak just trying to make fun video games. And then all of a sudden, it's like, what the fuck is going on? Have I, have I been working for the Russian mob this entire time? Like, what the <laughs> shit is this? Oh, man. I yeah. mean, they, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I actually did some work uh, after Zam. Uh, I was working on a project with with some guys from Russia. Actually, his name was Victor. I, I wonder if this is the guy. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> but um, I, did, I, did, I did some work for them. And, you know, we were contracting out people below us who had no idea who was above us, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's like, but at the time, it's like, you know, a few years ago, there was none, none of this, like, stigma uh, about, you know, or none of this discussion about, uh, about you know, Rush, Russia uh, meddling yeah, yeah. with, like, pol our pol political system. Um, and so... And so, yeah, it's it's like, but like you said, like you know, somebody um, like Arclegger, right, who is still at at Daybreak, like he he doesn't have anything to do with like the guy whose boss, whose no. boss's boss's main investing company, so oligarch, is actually getting his assets locked. Like they have no idea. It's 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 crazy. It just keeps yeah. going. Yeah, I don't know. It's super super weird, uh, and we honestly will probably never know the full story of what happened there. 
But right, um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, good luck to uh, all the uh, people who are being laid off from Daybreak, though, and uh, hopefully they land on their feet. Um, not in Russia. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> all right, so it is just about time to wrap up this episode, uh, but we do need a name title. for this episode. Yeah, we need a title for this episode from chat room. So go ahead and uh, if you're watching this live, go ahead and drop a suggestion or two or 12 in the chat. We'll take a look at those here in just a second. Uh, <laughs> that's a really good suggestion already. Hang on. Here we go. Oh, geez. Now, now with, with Battle Royale, Royale mode. <laughs> internet famous Battle Royale. <laughs> I should just do that. Just a special title for it. You know, yeah. just Internet famous Battle Royale. <laughs> BR mode. I think I think that's probably it. In Isn't Russia, it? battlegrounds. You. I think it's got to be internet famous battle royale. Yeah. BR battle royale. The BR. Mm. Eh. Mike hacked the election. Yeah. Mike yeah. hacked the election. I'm super super coding skills, man. Hacker man, watch out. Hacker man, watch out. Oh man, Halo battle royale. Now I just want a Halo battle royale. I mean, it could just happen. Oh, yeah. God, it might be in Shizzle's Battle Royale wedding. <laughs> a little long, but... <laughs> it could just be Battle Royale wedding. Uh, oh. Josh drinks Coors? That's just a lie. Dude, oh my God, this guy's been... <laughs> There's actually a username. <laughs> There's actually... I wonder who run, Who has that username. Uh, it's called. It's actually Josh drinks Coors. <laughs> and like it was, it was, it donated like three dollars to me, and I was like, "Don't go to Josh's channel with that name. <laughs> Stay away from Oof. Josh's channel. <laughs> I don't. I drink Michelob. Get famous, it right. I think Internet Famous Battle Royale uh, is uh, Internet Famous is Battle Royale. All yeah. right, we're doing that then. Battle Royale edition or some shit. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I mean, I have to figure it out like right now because well, I need to put Battle anything. Royale. Maybe I'll just change it. All right, fine. You can just change it later. That'll be good. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Can't believe it's not Battle Royale. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, well, that's pretty good too. No, we're going with Internet Famous Battle Royale. Shizzle, thank you so much for being on the show here, dude. What do you got coming up in the near future? Um, man, I don't know. Uh, Squad V11 updates pretty good, so I've been mm. playing some of that. Is Daisy uh, probably... actually doing a thing sometime soon? No. Okay. Uh, what Daisy's doing is they're doing uh, stress tests and they end up only usually being like an hour long before they crash. Oh, Jesus. Um, oh, man. That's, again, they, that's, they're stress tests for a reason, so that's good that they're breaking and getting the errors they need to fix it. Um, but you can play like 6-3 offline, but it's not the whole point of Daisy is knowing yeah. that there are other people in the world either to interact with or that are a threat. Mm -hmm. So I don't subscribe to the playing the offline mode. I think it's garbage. Um, but it looks smooth from what little bit of stress I did, but that's too far out to give a fuck about. Right mm -hmm. now, it's like Squad V11 update, it's pretty good. Start Stardew Valley. Mike. That's not bad. Yeah. And then uh, next week, fucking new DLC for, uh, whatchamacallit, for uh, Destiny. Because that actually looks decent because I've got a bunch mm. of different exotic changes and whatnot, so I'm yeah, excited. We, we somehow managed to not even talk about Destiny in this. Well, there, we got a topic for next week. <laughs> How Mike might have fallen. B. <laughs> AKA, AKA Mike B, what do you got going on? Uh, I'm gonna be playing uh, Stardew Valley with Chisel, so I've been switching my schedule around a little bit to 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 accommodate uh, streaming at night, uh, starting like around nine or so, which is early for Chisel. Um, but uh, but yeah, getting a good few hours of Stardew in every night, it's pretty nice, it's pretty fun. Uh, we're not tired of it yet. We're also not married yet, so I guess we haven't really fulfilled that <laughs> that whole thing yet. So we'll probably work on that, I guess. Um, that's pretty much it. Yep, just that photo shoots, and then uh, Nine Inch Nails next month, which is gonna be fucking awesome. That's it. And Roscoe's, oh, yeah, Roscoe's chicken and waffles, yeah. Roscoe's chicken and waffles. I'm gonna send on this vod and see if they can give me some money. <laughs> anyway, good. <laughs> uh, and I've been your host. Uh, Devilor, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Devilor, uh, where I mostly play GTA, uh, and pretend to be a depressed cop slash former security guard slash former other things slash generally just tragic, terrible things happen to it. I, I've decided Jeez. that I just cannot actually have him be happy about things because as soon as he's actually happy, I get bored and I have to come up with new terrible things to have happen to him. Oh, uh, so definitely check that out if you feel like feeling bad 
Yay! Man. That's a great plug. God. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. And we'll see you next Yay. time. Bye. Peace.